Hello Great 11s. We're going to be doing the trig functions today and that is going to be the sine, the cos and the tan function. In other words the graphs of sine, cos and tan. Now I'm going to start right from the beginning and I'm going to move quite quickly. Um, so it's very important that you have your Casio available to help you plot points. I'm going to do a little video right at the end um, just so that you know how to plot in the points so that you know what your graph looks like. Now to start off with, we've already done the cast diagram. So you've got your CAST diagram with where the different, fun where the different um, ratios are positive. So if we start with y equals sine x, we already know that sine is positive in the first and the second quadrant. In other words, between 0 and 90 degrees and 90 and 180 any angle there, sine will be positive. So let's have a look now. In other words, if I now translate this into an x and a y axis, with this being my degrees and that being the numbers, essentially then, according to our cast diagram, any angle between 0 to 90 and 90 and 180, our sine graph should be positive and then between 180 and 270 and 270 and 360, essentially the graph should be negative according to what we've already learned. So now the sine curve, we're going to plot our different points and the sine curve looks something like this. At 90 it's 1, at 180 it's 0, 270 is minus 1, 360 is 0. And if we draw our sine curve, it's a nice rounded curve looking something like that. And that ties up with where the sine curve is positive. It's positive between 0 and 180 and they're positive negative. So the sine curve obviously would continue this pattern as it goes on. So on the negative side, we could continue like that and at minus 90 it would be minus 1. And it would carry on in the positive direction, direction continuing as well. So that's our sine curve. And at 90 degrees it's 1 and we always need to fill in, if I could call those like our turning points, where its maximum is. And over here we've got a minimum, so that would be 270 minus 1. And so it continues in the negative direction and continues in the positive direction. Now there are two important things that we need to learn and know with each graph that we draw and that is our amplitude and our period. Now the amplitude is how high and how low it deviates from the baseline. So if we look at this particular sine curve, you see this is the baseline, it goes up one, down one, up one, down one. So the, the maximum that it deviates off this middle line is one unit. So the amplitude of this graph is going to be one and the, of the standard sine curve it's always one. And the period is, the, is how many degrees it takes to complete one full cycle before it repeats itself again. And if we look at the standard sine curve, you'll notice at zero it starts climbing reaches its maximum, down, turns, and it climbs again from 360, it starts to repeat one full cycle. So the period of the sine curve is 360 degrees. And that is our standard sine curve. Beautiful. Now let's move on to the next one. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the cos curve. I've rubbed out the sign, we're going to do the cos. Now remember, we're going to do it with our calculator. I'll show you just a little bit later how to plot the points. And we're going to do the cos curve. And the interesting, the, the key degrees again are 0, 90, 180, 273, 60. And if we tie that up to our cast diagram going around, you know, 0, 90, are the key values at which the different um, ratios change from positive to negative. Now, if we look at cos, and we remember from our cos diagram, they are positive where? Quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So that would be there and there. So cos is positive from 0 to 90. 
So cos essentially is positive there. And it's also positive from 270 to 360. Positive there. And in the second and third quadrant, it's negative. And tying that to our degrees here, it's between 0 and 180 would be negative, and between 180 and 270, negative. So now we go and we look at our calculator, we're plotting the points, and we come up with this curve. At 0 degrees, it's 1, and then at 90 degrees, it's 0, and at 180, it's going to be negative 1, then from there, it switches, cuts at 270, and we go up to 360, we hit 1 again. And that's our beautiful curve. As we notice, it's positive, negative, negative, positive. Just like the cast diagram. Now we want to label our points. So at 180 degrees, it has a minimum of minus 1. Cut 0 there again and reaches a maximum of 1 at 360 degrees. And this curve... If we continue in the negative direction, it doesn't suddenly do anything inconsistent. It consistently goes up and down. So from 1, it would start curving down again, and it would cut 90 degrees there. It would cut 90 degrees this side. So it would cut at minus 90. And if I continued in the positive direction, it would hit its max and start going down and cut here 90 degrees on from that. And there you have the cos curve. Very, very similar to the sine curve. But the interesting thing is the sine and the cos, remember, are co-ratios, so they're out by 90 degrees. A little bit later we'll talk about that. Let's look at the amplitude now. Remember, amplitude is how up it deviates from the baseline and how far below, and it deviates by one unit. Exactly the same as the sine curve. So our amplitude of the cos curve is one unit, period, how many degrees to complete one full cycle, and then it starts going down again, which is what it was doing here. So from there all the way to there is 360 degrees. So the period is 360 degrees. And there you have the cos curve. Now we move on to the tan. Okay, so now we're on to the tan function, the last one. Now sine and cos were very similar. They were just a little bit out of sync in terms of drawing them, 90 degrees out in fact. And now we want to tan. Now tan is, um, does its own little curve and its little runaway. Okay, it's completely different from the others. Don't forget, we're going to, you're going to do it on the calculator just now. And you'll notice when you get to 90, it gives you an error. And 270 also gives you an error. Now that essentially means that the tan of 90 degrees is undefined or doesn't exist. And the tan of 270 also doesn't exist. So let's have a look what, what that looks like. Now... Um, working with the actual tan curve, we're not going to go into details why it's undefined there or why it is a maths error on the calculator, but essentially that means it doesn't exist at that degree. So at 90 degrees, the tan of 90 doesn't exist. In other words, we would draw an asymptote at 90 degrees because the graph would get very, very, very close to 90, but doesn't exist at 90. So just before 90, it does exist. In fact, it's a very, very big number. So you would notice, using your Casio, that at 90, it was a maths error. In other words, undefined. It didn't exist. But at 0, it was 0. At 45 degrees, it's a key value of 1. And then the closer that you got, the closer that you got to 90 degrees, this value of the graph got very, very, very big. I think... Um, at 89, it's 57 or something, so it climbs very quickly. And then at 90, it doesn't exist. But then at 91, it does exist, but it's minus 57 right at the bottom. And so you plot your points, and you find at 180, it's 0. At 135, it was minus 1. At 225, and these are key values with the tan 1. It was up to 1. 270 was again undefined. So our graph was very small here, and then it became minus 1, and then it cut at 180, 2 to 5 became 1, and then climbed very quickly again. Okay, so these are key values. 270 was undefined. 271, it dropped very low again. And then at 315, it was minus 1.
and we put an arrow on these ends implying that they continue and then obviously that would also continue up there and at the negatives would also continue down there. So it would at 45 is 1, at minus 45 it would be minus 1. So very consistent in terms of pattern, in terms of repeating. Let's start up with our cast diagram. Tan is positive in the first and the third quadrant. So tan is positive there and there. Between 0 to 90, yes, look, between 0 to 90 it was positive. It's positive again between 180 and 270. What do you know? Between 180 and 270 it's positive. Then it's negative. So it's positive, negative, positive, negative. Positive, negative, positive, negative. So it all ties up. Maths just has a beautiful synchronicity about it. Um, and there we go. But if we look now at our last two things, amplitude and period, we can't talk about amplitude because remember amplitude is a deviation from the baseline up and down. Now, where, how high does it go? It doesn't have a maximum. It keeps going to, towards positive infinity and towards negative infinity. So we don't talk about amplitude with the tan curve. But we do talk about period, the number of de degrees to complete one full cycle. So if you stand back and look, this would be one full cycle here. So from 90 to 270 is a gap of 180 degrees. Because look here, it starts to climb, it repeats here. So between 0 and 180, it does a complete curve. Or it, better really between 90 and 270 which is a gap of 180 degrees so the period of the tan curve is 180 degrees different to sine and to sine and cos sine and cos was 360 degrees this is 180 okay so now what i'd like you to do is i just quickly run through this is go back to your calculator and actually plot these points on a set of axes or on some graph paper just to get a clear feel of what these graphs actually look like and how they behave. Once you've done that, we're going to move very quickly onto the different effects, the shifts and the lifts, um, and how different values can play around with the, the uh, trig functions. Okay, thank you. Okay, grade 11s, we're now going to um, work with a Casio and find points that lie on the curve in order to plot the points and see what the curve looks like. And it's very, very important that we know how to use this because we're going to use it in every graph that we draw in trick. So what we do is we start off by going to mode and we want the table, which in my calculator is number seven. Yours might be number three, but you look for the word table. And now fx equals is the name of your graph. So if we draw the sine graph, we're going to go fx equals sine. And I want sine of x. So to get x on your calculator, we have to go alpha, which is up there, x, it's the red, x there, and then we close our bracket. So now that's the graph I want to draw, sine x. So I press equals. Equals is like an enter button. G, G of x is my second graph. I don't want to draw a second graph, so I just press equals. Start. Start means at what degree on my x-axis do I want to start drawing the graph. And I'm going to go for each one from naught to 360. So my start is going to be 0, enter, so I press equals, end, I want it to end at 360 degrees, so I'm going to go 360, enter, steps. Now steps is means how often do I want my points to come up and I think um, if I just put my key values of 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, that's a steps of 90 and that's not sufficient, it's a little bit too far apart, so I'm going to put it gaps of 30, because 30 goes into 90, so I'm going to go step 30. In other words, every 30 degrees, it's going to give me what my point is. So I go 30 equals, and now what comes up is my points on the graph that I'm going to draw. So on the left-hand column, you'll see you've got 0, 30, 60. That's your x value, and on the right is your y value. So the first point there would be 0, 0. My second point would be 30 degrees, 0.5. So my graph would go through 30, 0.5. And if we keep going, there it shows me at 90, it's going to be 1. So that's a coordinate 91, 90, 1, where 90 is on the x, 1 is on the y. 
And so we keep going. 120 is 0 0.8. 150 is 0 0.5. 180 is 0. And so we keep going all the way through and we plot all those points. We hit 360 and it's back to 0. And if you plot those points, you will get what your sine curve looks like, which we know is a curve starting at 0, going up, hitting 1, coming down, crossing at 180, minus 1, and then back to 360, 0. And there you have it. And this is crucial for every single graph that you're going to draw. You're going to put it on your calculator, get the points, and know exactly what it looks like. Okay. Thank you. And then if you want to go back to the normal, you go mode number 1, which is just your normal computing work 1, and then we back to our normal input. 56 times 1 equals 56. Thanks, grade 11s. That's it for now.